All right. Hi, everybody. How's it going? So this is another live stream. I need to do these things more often. I was on a live stream yesterday. There was a lot of fun with Kate Strachny. And uh, yeah, so I need to do these more often and get a few more information out there to you and also questions from you. So if you're here, just say hi. Um, put in the chat if you have any questions regarding data engineering and so on. I'm going to answer everything that comes up. So for today's stream, I was thinking where to go with uh, platforms. You might know from what I'm telling people previously, go to AWS, right? People were, ah, here come a few people. Hello. Hello, Ashta. Hello, hello, hello. So people asking me all the time, Andreas, what platform should I start with? Should I go with AWS? Should I go with GCP? Should I go with Azure? What's what's the deal? Where, where should I start with? And I've been telling people to go and to use AWS for this. AWS is my favorite platform. I see this also all the time. But what I want to do is I want to get a bit more information out there for you to back this up, this claim that AWS is the best platform to do. So what I'm doing usually on my LinkedIn most, I think almost every day, I'm running a poll. So with uh, usually it's three answers and a tell me more answer. And this way I get feedback from the community, uh, basically what what's happening. So this is what I want to show you today. Hi, Philippe. Hello, hello, Sitana. So last week we brought out our new Data Engineering Insider. It's a uh, document that I created. I just want to give you a bit more background of what's happening right now. And this Insider is, I can show you here. Let me share the screen. It's basically a PDF that you can download with uh, surveys that I run. These are the LinkedIn polls and I'm going to do more of them next time. Uh, blog posts that are interesting, YouTube videos I've been running for, uh, I've been doing so like interesting blog posts on a Medium publication, YouTube interviews that I had and courses that I do and also job, uh, job opportunities that you can apply to for senior software engineer, data engineer, scientist, senior software engineer, for instance. Now, because not every time uh, data engineers are needed. Da data engineers are actually mentioned in the job description. So this thing, I added the link in the description of this video. You can download this for yourself. You can click on the stuff and check it out. But what I want to show you today is the main thing about platforms. So again, as I said, I'm telling people for a long time, AWS is the thing to go for. And here's what I learned through my LinkedIn polls. So these two posts, it doesn't say it here, but these two had, uh, each one had a thousand, uh, a thousand uh, votes here. So in this, as you can see, what cloud do you see most often as requirements in job descriptions? 66% of people say it's AWS, 21 Azure, 9% GCP and other stuff like a dupe or something is only four percent so keep this in mind this is this is why i also say aws is the main thing to go for uh, it's because you see this all the time in job descriptions when i did the coaching also saw this all the time when you go around talk to people aws is the most uh, most used uh, platform the interesting part in this a bit is when you look into machine learning and ask about machine learning, what's the best place to do machine learning? P 
people actually tend to go a bit more towards GCP, right? So GCP here has 9% of which is the, which you see most often in platforms. But the best place for machine learning is to, it's still AWS. But this is where GCP jumps. So an interesting thing to keep in mind, GCP um, is, inter is, is good for machine learning. Why is this so? Um, I also ran two more polls on, in this. And these are coming on the next page. So let's quickly see what people are saying here. Soup says machine learning, uh, Databricks is better. Well, Databricks, you have to see, see it like this. Databricks is not necessarily a cloud. Yes, you can host it on the Databricks cloud. But what are you going to have most of the time is you're going to have a connection between each of the clouds. Like you, you host your Spark cluster on Databricks but you, the rest of your infrastructure is on AWS or on GCP or on Azure. So that's why that's why I specifically not mentioned here as the cloud platform Databricks because this doesn't really fit to cloud platform. Yes, it's a cloud, but it's more like a service, a cloud service, uh, I would say. I know uh, if you agree with this. So and this is how this how this usually fits together um yeah so and also if you're already on aws you host the spark cluster there it's also very simple if you want so this is the first part let me get into the second part the second part i was thinking of okay oops so what are people actually doing here what are they actually working on and what they are working on, it's very interesting. Which type of systems are you working on more often? 82% say, okay, they work more as uh, in the data warehousing sector than in actually transactional data stores with relational databases or NoSQL databases like DynamoDB or MongoDB or something. So that's, that's also an interesting part. And... Um, stream or batch processing it's also it fits exactly to this data warehouse batch processing stream processing transactional data stores so this is this almost fits to the percent here this also explains a bit why are um why are people actually going a lot for gcp like we said in this best place for machine learning and so uh, machine learning here gcp i would say this also is because first of all gcp is very strong in this in machine learning has good services but also gcp fits a lot to this data warehouse and batch processing part because with bigquery as i tell the ratio explains bigquery for machine learning compared to AWS's Redshift where people analyze stuff is not really um, it's, it's not really a good comparison because GCP with BigQuery has a lot of cool features and BigQuery is so easy to use instead of Redshift where you struggle through. So keep this in mind. This is why I always say AW, go with AWS and also if you're in this if you're looking for warehouse batch processing or machine learning you could also look into GCP. But generally, if you want to do something and, and not go wrong, then you should... What happened here? Then you should actually look into AWS because it has so, such a high adoption rate and you see it all the time. Yeah. I hope this helps. So what do you think? Put, post in the comments uh, more questions. Dong Ling, hey, or Tony, hey. This is basically, oops, this is basically what we were, what we were working on. And this is going to, uh, and the new insider is going to come out next year and uh, next, <laughs> next year, next month. 
uh, where we are actually adding more trends. I'm currently working on um, finding out more trends that I can show in the Insider because I've been running and organizing these polls for some time now. I think I have 250 polls lined up. I also posted about this yesterday on LinkedIn. So there's a lot of stuff coming. Yeah, I have a few more minutes. So data engineering, the my academy, courses, tools. Let me know where you're where you are. What I also did today, I worked today a bit on something. I can show you here. This is this is really fresh. Um, what I added to my website today. I added to my website here a new service. I added uh, corporate recruiting. So for companies who need to fill positions with data engineers that I actually help them find these people because I have a large network with YouTube and LinkedIn. I have a network of over 100,000 people and in our private community for the academy there are right now far over 500 people so i guess this is this is um this is easy f to find someone i tried it the other way around in the beginning of this year have candidates and find companies which is terrible so i'm just putting it out there if you have someone or know someone who needs to fill a data engineer position get in touch it's behind that is a form and you can actually get in touch with this. Azure's interface looks cleaner than GCP. What do you think? Uh, mm, I have been playing around a bit with Azure for my feel or from, for my taste, GCP is better. So I have been struggling a lot less with GCP. They have, it's quite simple to, to set up services there. Uh, once you get to know, or once you get into the habit of on the left side, you have your tools and you you use them. I think it's, it's really nice. The way how to do this, how to do stuff is a, a lot, is for me a lot complicate, more complicated on Azure. That's why I'm not the big Azure fan. I have been struggling a bit with Azure and then I uh, just, let's, I dropped it for now. So I actually like the GCP uh, interfaces. Is this the same concept for data science? Well, you have to think of, Asha, you have to think of where data, well, data science is not a bubble, right? So the scientist who's creating the algorithms needs to deploy them somewhere. Right. And if 66% of the companies are on AWS, then most likely you're going to build and you're going to deploy your models then also on AWS. So it's, I would say it's kind of true for, for, for AWS then, right? That's how I would, uh, how I would attack this. Yeah, I would, I would also use data science or try to find out how to build models and, and deploy everything on AWS. How important to have AWS certification when pursuing data science? Well, for a scientist, I, I wouldn't say it's super important because as a scientist, you're more, your use case or your job usually is more analyzing the data. Right, and trying to create good analytics results. Why for the engineer, or on the other side for the engineer, it's a lot more, uh, more needed because the engineer needs to apply all of this in practice. Do you need a, certific a certification? Absolutely not. If you have qualifications, then you don't need it. I can tell you an example, for instance. One of my students recently got a job at a company where he's also working on the cloud and he's making over 150,000 a year. He also ha didn't have a AWS 
a certificate, but he could show a project, I think, or even two projects. He could show a project on AWS where it did end-to-end, -end, where it used a lot of services, and then it wasn't really a problem. So look at it this way. If you don't have some experience and if you don't, if you can't show something that you have on GitHub, a really cool project with documentation and everything, then go for a certification, but otherwise, hmm. not really. Usually, if let's say they require it and, and you, you, you have the experience and they can see you have the experience because you can also talk about it. And then you can say, okay, well, while you're on the job, you're doing this on the side, then the certification in the first month or something. So it shouldn't be a big problem. How easy though is it to switch between cloud services? DM, that's a really good question. The thing is, when you look at these services, it's most of the time it's the same. So these services are differently named and they work a bit different. But in essence, it's always the same thing. It's, so it's literally, you can go on, do I still have that here? Let me, let me find something. Uh, where did I have this? I think I have this on my drive. I can show you an example here. Let me quickly open it up. Um, I, because when I created the insider, I actually, I know that wasn't it. Um, I actually created this. So put in more questions while I search here. I think I have it in a sec. Here I have it. Okay, let me share it. So here, so if you look at the tools and if you look at the a comparison, I always talk about my, where's my blueprint? My blueprint, right? Where you have the connect phase, where you have APIs and so on. And then you have, then you have a storage, you have process and you have the buffers. So storage is NoSQL, SQL storage is its data warehouse, data lake. Processing is stream and batch processing frameworks like Spark or Lambda or whatever. And then you have the message queues and visualizations. So when you look at this and you want to compare this between the, between the cloud platforms, you can look at it at this way that you look at these phases. So right in AWS, you have API gateway. What's the alternative then on the other platforms? On Azure is API management, on GCP it's API gateway. If you do it with open source tools, you might look into Flask or, uh, or a fast API. If you look at a message queue, AWS Kinesis, Azure Event Hub, GCP pops up, Apache Kafka, they work basically the same way. It's just a different name and it's a bit of different configuration. These are on the cloud platforms are a lot easier to configure than Kafka and set up because they are usually software as a service tools. And the same way works for everything else, for Lambda, for functions, for cloud fun Lambda, you have Azure functions, you have GCP cloud functions, you have Docker, you would do this with Python or a Python within a Docker container, right? And the same thing for storage, you would have on AWS, let's say you have DynamoDB, what would be the alternative then on Azure, Cosmos DB, GCP, you would most likely use a Cloud Spanner for this. And then on a Docker, you might, or open source, you might use MongoDB, right? So I think you can see, take a screenshot of this, um, I'm also going to post this in a few days or some time, but this is how you can actually um, translate this. You do have visualization on AWS, it's QuickSight, the BI tool, Azure, it's Power BI, GCP Data Studio. If you have this here as open source, you might want to run a Streamly dashboard or you have Grafana or Kibana or something. I think there are also other tools. I just forgot how they are, how they're called. Um, 
Where are also where are there other BI tools that you can use? Um, I think there are some. How are they? How is this called? Somebody know a, a BI tool that is actually nice to use? That is an alternative to these that is free. What's this called? Ah. Let me quickly Google. Open source BI tools. Ah. I don't know. Oh, click is high voter. Hey. Uh, no, Q, click, I think, no, click is not free. Saurabh, no, no, not, not Tableau. Here we are, metabase subset. The, I think these, these are the right ones. Tableau is, you have to pay for it. Power BI, you can use for free, but I think metabase and so on, these are the right, um, Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. Metabase is the right one. Very nice hint, voter. So these these are alternatives to that that you can use. Yeah. Any more questions? I I limit I made a limit here or set my, my personal limit to thirty minutes, so I just wanted to get that initial message over. I go with AWS. It's the safest bet. A lot of people are there. A lot of companies use it. The, as you can see, that the, if you want to transition between the platforms, the services very often are the same. And they just name differently and have the configuration is a bit differently. But yeah. Okay. Something else. Something else. I think that's it for today. If you're interested in um, personal branding, I think that is a topic that is very important for every uh, every professional nowadays. I made a video yesterday on Kate Strachny's uh, channel, or I, I had a live stream with her. So try to go, let me open it up here check this out this is very it was was a lot of fun and it was very helpful where is it um on her data catered channel videos it's actually not up eh. she doesn't have it up yet then it's on her linkedin okay then I don't see many, any more questions. If you want to learn data engineering here, learndataengineering.com. Check out the academy. I'm currently working on the new certification. I'm doing certi a associate data engineer certification to basically help my students get a show that they're job ready. And for that, I'm testing all kinds of, of things. And yeah. That's like, oh, can I show this somewhere? Ah, no, it, it's not published yet. So basically, I'm, I'm testing AWS in this for our AWS project. I'm taking, I'm testing Spark, Kafka, Docker, APIs, platform building, NoSQL and SQL databases, and the, yeah, the standard stuff, Python, SQL software development these things i test based in our in my uh in my new certification that is coming next week uh when we, can we use what when we can use with emr serverless and clue serverless i'm not 100 sure what do you mean mustafa when can we use that when does that make sense to use Can you can you clarify this? Generally, I would go for the serverless um, 
serverless use cases if you want to save money and if you have jobs that don't need to run all the time the glue job the emr job you're only paying for the time that the job is actually running so if the job isn't running you're not paying for this which is a huge benefit instead of going on a or getting servers paying for the servers all the time and then not doing anything with it so that's a bit that that's a small tip i would always start with serverless and then uh, move towards uh, move towards a a let's say a reserved um, environment when the load gets higher because it's it's a bit cheaper and it's easier to calculate these glue jobs you're paying by the minute and so it can get very expensive if you're doing a lot of stuff what's the use case of spark versus emr and glue well glue and spark is basically one thing and uh with emr you can um how was that I haven't done a lot with EMR lately. I've been doing a lot with glue. Uh, I think EMR is, isn't EMR a reserved instance that you then get usually pricing. Yeah, I think EMR is usually for than for for getting servers and having a, a reserved instance so i would as i said mustafa start with serverless and then uh, if that gets too expensive or the load gets higher then you move to a reserved or to reserved instances via emr okay so thanks for being here everybody was a nice half an hour i think i'm going to try this every day now to just give you a few updates something interesting things that i have learned and uh, just to chat answer a few questions i really really like this and uh, yeah see you tomorrow again check out my uh, academy if you're interested in data engineering